जय श्री माता जी आज के सामूहिक ध्यान सत्र में उपस्थित सभी सहजी भाई बहनों का हार्दिक स्वागत है ध्यान की शुरुआत कुंडलिनी चढ़ा के बंधन लेते हुए करेंगे तीन महामंत्र और श्री गणेश मंत्र श्री माता जी हमारा आत्म साक्षात्कार दृढ़ कीजिएगा
पूरा चित्त हमारे सहस्त्रार में ही रखेंगे इसी ध्यान की स्थिति को बरकरार रखते हुए हम अभी श्री माता जी की अमृत वाणी ग्रहण करेंगे इन दोज डेज द गुरु हैव टू बी एब्सोल्युटली द अथॉरिटी एंड it was the guru who would decide which disciples he'll have and one had to go <coughs> into great tapasya to great penance to even become a disciple and this hardship was the only way the guru used to judge gurus would always live in jungles and they would select their disciples very few very very few and they had to go and beg food from the neighboring villages and cook food for their guru with their own hands and feed the guru that sort of guru business is not in such that basically we must understand 
that the difference between those styles of guruship <coughs> and that we have now is this that very few individuals were given the chance to become the guru, very few. And these few also were selected out of quite a lot of people and they felt that there was something really special that they are being selected, chosen and that whatever <coughs> uh, they will have to go through is all welcome. With this idea, they became the disciples. But Sahaja Yoga is a very different thing, I would say just the opposite. First of all, your guru is a mother and who suffers from Sandra Karuna. At the slightest things that happen to you, my eyes get filled with tears. So, <clears throat> as a mother, to be a guru is a very difficult thing. But at the same time, for you to achieve heights is also difficult because you get lost when I love you so much and in that love <coughs> Uh, you forget sometimes that the progress in your being is very slow. It is important that in Sahaja Yoga you have to be strict with yourself. That's why I said that you have to be your own guru which people do not understand what it means. You have to be your own guru means you have to guide yourself, you have to treat yourself as your disciple and you have to trim yourself. If you do not understand the responsibility as Sahaja Yogi of working it out yourself, everything, you cannot move very fast because it is a different type of relationship between the guru and the disciples. So first I have always said you become your own guru. <coughs> so you have to make a lot of introspection and fix your ideals. Before you, I am sitting. You have seen me how I am. I can eat anything, I need not eat at all for days together. I can sleep anywhere, I may not sleep at all. I travel for miles together untiringly. I have this energy because I am a guru of myself also. So the first thing is that there should be lot of introspection. What's wrong with me, not wrong with others? What's wrong with me? Am I seeking the comfort of my body? The attention, is it on my body? or on my spirit. If so, what am I doing? 
I think best thing is to write it down. <clears throat> Can I sleep on the grass? Can I sit on the stone? You have to make this body work. Can I sleep any time I like and can I keep awake any time I like? I've seen people doze off. The reason is this, not that they're bad or in any way indisciplined people, but because inside they are tired. If you are tired inside, then you feel tired all the time. You will see on the television, if you see people in the West, they are always <sighs> sitting like this, because they are so very tired. Why are they so tired? They don't work so hard. So introspect how you behave. Now when you start introspecting yourself, you'll also start introspecting your surroundings and your styles and your methods and what you are doing to yourself because of the conditionings of the outside. Now the conditionings of the outside <coughs> in the West are of a psychological nature. Indians have other conditionings which are also quite surprising or we should say the Western people, they must wash their hand ten times, even if their skin comes out, they'll go on washing like mad. They must have a bathroom attached to them all the time, but they must have their baths. If they don't have bath, they are not comfortable. They have other conditionings also. All kinds of stupid conditionings they have, but the conditionings that we have in the West are more psychological, and that's why you cannot find out what's wrong with you. The physical conditionings are not so dangerous, you can get over them or you can manage. But when you have conditioning of your psychology, you cannot understand what's wrong with you. <coughs> now, if you see, if you introspect around, what you will find is a very subtle thing. Firstly, that because of the wars maybe, I don't know why, but everybody is afraid of everyone. Especially I think Freud, because of Freud, even the mother is afraid of the child and all these things to Indians are absolutely, they can't understand. But you people know that very well. They won't touch anybody, they won't hug anyone. First of all, when they used to play football, they used to hug, but now I see they don't hug, they just touch hands like this. <laughs> After some time, I think they may just do like that or something. So frightened, that nobody, even the children I've seen, are frightened of hugging their parents. So the expression of love is not there. And when there is no expression, there is no love inside. And that's how it goes on drying up and drying up and drying up. There was a little girl in Sahaja Yoga. And I had some present for that child. She was quite young, must have been about ten years of age. So I gave it to one Sajogi, Western Sajogi, that you go and give it to her and say that I've given. No, mother, I won't give. I said, why? She'll misunderstand me. I said, what will she misunderstand? It has gone so much into the heads of people. And this has created really the psychological insecurity within you. From very childhood this insecurity has been working. And that's why you are frightened of each other. 
even of your parents, of your brothers, your sisters. Psychologically you are suffering. And when first I came to England, they used to say, it is the insecurity. I said, what insecurity? The whole world is afraid of the Western world. And what are they suffering from insecurity? They have made everybody insecure all over the world. And why? What are they insecure? They are insecure within themselves, in their own society, in their own family, in their own groups. They are so much frightened of each other. So the first thing, you should be fearless. You are a Sahaja you are no more immoral, <coughs> cannot be immoral. If all the time, if you start thinking that you are immoral and if you do something it is immoral and that you have to go and do some confession somewhere, then what is going to happen to you? What sort of a personality you will have? We have to change this by changing ourselves. So among Sahaja Yogis there should be no insecurities but maryadas. You must know how to respect each other's privacy. The second thing that if you find in the Western mind, which is a very common thing, that they are bombarded by criticism. There are so many critics that the, now there are no more artists left, only critics are criticizing critics. All artists are finished. They are all the time criticized. Somebody will come in, there's an education on criticism. They may not know how to play uh, any instrument, they may not know how to sing, but they can criticize, all right. So all the time in your mind is a way that you always feel that somebody will criticize if you do this. All the time the fear is there that somebody will criticize. So, should I say or not? As Sahaja Yogis, you shouldn't worry about these stupid people because they are blind and if they want to criticize, you let them criticize. What does it matter? Makes no difference. But this you have to build up within yourself. Now the third is even worse, which I don't know if you have noticed or not. I don't know how it has gone into the heads of the Western minds that you must always see to the other side of the bank, even if you are standing on this side, to be fair, and never to say something that you are sure of. Like you ask anyone, how are you, he'll say, always. Nobody say, will say, I'm perfectly all right, nothing wrong with me. What's wrong? Perfectly all right, thank you very much. <laughs> but it is never, they're not sure of themselves all the time. Is shaking. And this shaking inside gives you a personality which can never progress. Progress comes when you put your step forward, you put your foot firmly on that point and then put the second step Forward, like as you climb on a mountain. But in the first place only if you are still thinking that it's halfway through, 
then how can you go further? You will only move on two steps, this or that or this or that. This is another very big psychological uh, detergent, I should call it, or detrimental thing for your progress. Now the third thing you have learnt, which is also third or fourth maybe, that you must argue out yourself. Like you have a problem, you'll come and tell me, Mother, this problem I've got. This is very common with everyone. I have this problem. I'll say, all right, this is the solution. Then you will come out, no, 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 but in this, this will happen. Then you tell another solution, no, 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 Mother, this can be this way. All right, you tell third solution, no, Mother, in this, this can happen. Tell fourth, this can happen. You are standing against yourself all the time. Then I have to say, this is your problem, not mine, and I am giving you the solutions and if you want to solve your problem, better take a positive attitude. The brain is this way. <laughs> In our Hindi language we call it ulti khopri. You are all the time arguing against yourself. So how can you progress? This is another great problem of the Western mind that it doesn't try to face any problem as your own but go on arguing with yourself like a uh, lawyer, you see, there are two lawyers, one yourself, another lawyer, go on arguing. So is a double personality in the world, being, is not a single personality. As I said, it is very, very psychological that people have to take to this kind of a turn suddenly, without understanding how dangerous it is. With the enlightenment of your brain, they should disappear. On the contrary, in Sahaja Yoga, it's very dangerous because you say something, you are a Sahaja Yogi, you are connected with the all-pervading power. Whatever you say gets connected and it acts. It's very dangerous for you people not to realize that you are realized souls and not to assume your own powers like, you see, I have to say something secretly, then I must put my hand here and then say it, because it is connected to the mains. But supposing I keep it open like this and say something, it goes to everyone. In the same way, whatever the Sahaja Yogis say or desire or want, there are just people sitting there, see here and here you have put them there. They are listening to you all the time. They are so anxious to do your work, all right, you say so, done. So whatever you think, or whatever you desire, or whatever you say, you have to be extremely careful. And when now, I mean, old people, all right, I can say that very conditioned, they have problems, you know. 
but the generation that is here, most of them are all capable of improving yourself and making your brain state by bringing it backwards to the forward. The psychological problem you do not see. <clears throat> the another psychological problem is which you do not know, which is very surprising, that whatever is the entrepreneur's ideas, you must act, because the whole fundamentals of Western life is to see and to be seen. So, oh, that's the fashion, so we should do that. Like this is the fashion, so we do that. Like the other day, about a year back, I went to England and I found all the Sajoginis having their hair here. I said, what's this? So I asked an Indian girl, I said, what is this supposed to be? This is a new fashion. I said, what new fashion? Call it Jipraya in Marathi, you know? We call it Jipraya fashion. <laughs> Only the Marathians can. <laughs> and they all had their hair here, you know, like this, all. I said, my God, this is Agya, which they are covering, their eyes will become squinty. But the fashion, if it comes, and the whole fashion is with the hair alone. Hair, I don't know what. There's so much interest in the hair, and they lose the hair so fast in, in these countries without using the oil which they should use. They lose their hair very fast. Starting from the hair, the sastra. Then, fashion means what is this? This entrepreneurs, these stupid people are creating ideas, and then why should we follow them? I don't say that Sir Jogi should all look alike, not at all. You can dress up the way you like, you can live the way you like, but you should not get yourself enslaved by any entrepreneurs. You are free people now, know that very well. Know that you are absolutely free and your freedom is absolutely in the light of your enlightenment. You can never do wrong. But first of all, have that confidence within yourself that whatever you have to do, you are not going to enslave yourself to entrepreneurs, what people have to say, how you will look, how you will uh, appear before. This is a very important point, that half of the time we are laboring just to look like many others. It's very surprising how these entrepreneurs have befooled the Western people. In India it won't work, won't work, especially the Indian women. This, uh, my, in between came a mini sari came up to Bombay for five, about four or five days, I think, disappeared. No Indian woman would wear a mini sari, finished. <laughs> Nothing to eat. <laughs> Any sort of fashion now comes in India, doesn't stay, because whatever clothes we have now in India is traditionally has been there, has been tested and uh, error and trial and error and trial and we know now this is the best, now stop it. At certain age you stop, this is the style that suits us the best. But anything goes on, you know, the styles go on changing. And this is what you have to be very careful to see, that you do not take to stupid things which are being created by entrepreneurs, but to sensible things which are required for. So one of the enslavement, I feel, is that uh, you have to play into the hands of entrepreneurs. But a slavery is very deep and is so psychological. In so many ways it is extremely uh, hidden and so subtle 
that you cannot make it out. So in the introspection you find out what's gone wrong with you, how you are made this way, what's wrong in my own personality. It has come from all the surroundings and the way people have been putting ideas into my head. You should have your own ideas. You shouldn't worry what Plato said and what Socrates said and what this thing said. What do you think? After all, you are enlightened people. But then there is another psychological thing which is even the worst. And that, Mother, if we are very sure, then we are putting up our ego. They are so much afraid of their ego that as if after some time they'll take off. The ego will bloat so much that will take off. This is another fear people have, that if we assert, all right, this is what I want, this is the right thing to do, then I'll get off, so I don't want to say such a thing, I have an ego. So with Sahaja Yoga also certain fears have crawled in. One of them is that, Mother, I should not have any ego. Now what is the problem of ego? That also surprising despite all fear and everything, as a reaction to it, people have developed a kind of a uh, protesting character. But again these entrepreneurs have pampered your ego. Like in the morning you ask the child, what will you have? Then child say, I'll have this. The mother has to run and get it or she must keep everything in the fridge. In India that's not the case. Whatever is cooked in the house we better have. If there is no salt, all right, without salt, come along. Otherwise don't eat, doesn't matter. In any case you will eat. So when the disciplining comes within yourself and you understand this, then you do not say, I desire only this, I desire only this. What you desire, you tell yourself. All right, you will not have it for one month, let's see. Once I must tell you about myself that little bit comfort grew upon me sometimes, I think. So we had had a transfer and uh, my family was not with me at that time. We had only one small little bed where my husband slept and I slept just on the bare cement in the old. And next day I started getting the pain in the body. I said, all right. I slept on the cement for one month. On the cement you get pain, all right, sleep now. One month I said, I'm going to sleep on the cement. Then cement lost its power on me. <laughs> then might be the cement might be feeling the pain. <laughs> so that's what you have to do is to master your mind. Now the problem only will come, what is the discretion, this ego will come up, Mother? Because your ego, as I said, is developed by reactions, by protesting against things and also by the pampering of the uh, entrepreneurs. All right, whatever may be the reason, we are not going to psychoanalyze ourselves. But the fact is also we have a ego problem. Why? I've already told you that if a balloon is bloated many a times, it can easily be bloated. At the slightest <laughs> air, it bloats. And that's why you are afraid that suddenly my ego might become so big that I may be like a balloon in the air somewhere moving. 
But how to get rid of this is to know that you are an enlightened soul. Respect yourself. Once you start respecting yourself, you will not fall into any traps of ego. Very simple. Respect yourself. You have to say, I am a surgeon. Okay? How can I behave like this? After all, I am a surgeon. A kind of a dignity that develops. And then you will start feeling shy of doing something that is stupid, because ego makes you stupid, that's the point. Absolutely. So, now, if you develop this respect for yourself, I am a surgeon, so I can't behave like this, I am a surgeon. If you say like that to yourself, then you will be amazed that the dignity of a surgery will definitely keep you down to earth. You will not get into the trap of your ego. So one side is the conditioning, another side is this ego, simple thing is ego. That dignity has to be developed. You'll be surprised among animals, there are mariyadas. Like a tiger won't behave like a snake, and snake won't behave like a tiger. So we are now sajogis, we are tigers among human beings, we are lions among human beings, the highest. We are the highest human beings. It's not necessary to have ten, uh, what you call, uh, medals on your body to show that you are something great, but you are Sahaja Yogis, you are Maha Yogis. So develop that respect and you will be surprised the humility will immediately come into you, will, will walk into you, humility. I have seen some Sahaja Yogis sit like this, Sometimes sit like this, sometimes they, one, if the left Vishuddhi is there, like this, right Vishuddhi is there, like this. But then you see yourself, like a bridegroom has to dress up and he remembers, I am the bridegroom, I cannot behave like other younger boys who will be there. I have to have my own personality. I am the bridegroom, I am going for my wedding. I cannot behave like all mother friends are there. You have to behave in a particular manner. So assume this. Still, we do not know that we are surgeries. Once we know we are Sahaja Yogis, that dignity will develop within us and with that dignity you will be amazed, you will also see what is wrong in your own country, what is indignified. Now, with the, whatever has happened in France, you can find out what's wrong with French laws, but French are more interested in drinking and eating and other things. So they never paid at all, oh, let it be, what do you care for laws, let it be as it is, doesn't matter, who should bother about these things, there's nothing important. After all, if you can get something to drink, you go to any French village at seven time, you cannot meet anyone, even a drunkard. 
they are sitting inside and drink, drink. I mean, that's the main religion, main pastime. Next day with the hangover they come, so they see everything the other way down. Like this fellow, this journalist who went to India, they saw an iron gate and they thought this was the iron curtain of Hitler. We, everything expanded, you know, so big, crooked, because hangover, you know. So the whole life in the West like a hangover. Either they see things too big or too small, they don't see things as they are. Now most of these things are written, which you will read, the psychology and all those things and the books, mostly they are drunkards. If you see their lives, they have been drunkards, so whatever they have written, why should we take them so seriously? Except for very few who were realized soul, most of them were drunkards, like those who wrote about Greek uh, tragedies, must have been really drunkard people. In, they must be taking a lot of things inside and they must be writing something like that. Because most of the drunkards, when they write, they say that, why, why, should, why should I live? I must die. And like that we too have in India many people who have written ghazals who always say that, why should we live? We should die. So there's one poet who has said, now you are talking of die, why don't you die once for all? <laughs> so you will realize that what you will write, what you will say is higher than all these people. But Sahaja Yoga has worked so smoothly in you that you do not know what you are. Today on Guru Puja you are worshipping your Guru. At the same time I bow to your Guru within yourself. Let your Guru come up and show itself. Especially the kind of a guru you have, I am not strict with you, I am very gentle. Because as I told you, fundamentally is a different thing, is that it is not for an individual, but it is for the collective. And if something has to spread collectively, then you have to understand that it has to be only love, that is going to work. There is no other way we can spread Sahaja Yoga because we cannot be like Hitler, giving wrong ideas of hatred. Either it could be hatred or love. You teach people, we hate this one, fundamentalism, this, that, you'll get thousands ready to fight. You can elevate their baser self, and say, all right, come along, let us fight. Racialism, this, that, anything, even nationalism. All right, there are people. But when I say love, is very different, try to understand, and because of our collective work, we have to know that love is a source of energy that makes things grow in a living manner. It is the energy which is a living energy. Try to understand now, this is people don't understand. Love doesn't mean that you hug somebody or do something, but living energy that understands, that makes you good. I hope you have seen my books and I hope you have read it. In that I have described you, to you very clearly what is the living energy within us that works. And anything that is working, for example, see this flower. Now, I cannot order this one to go straight. It's moving in its own way, let it be. It looks nice because no flower should look like another flower. Living energy 
never creates the same thing exactly the another way. Only plastics can be done. Now, when it is growing, it is growing in its own way. So the whatever is built in within you, which is a living energy, built in but living energy, and a living thing that works, it blossoms by itself. The water of pure love is to be given. In pure love, what you see in another person as a guru, what's the matter with myself where it is obstructing me to go further? In another person as a guru, what you see is how to handle this man with love so that he comes closer to reality. It's a very gentle process, it's a very loving process, and nothing like really enjoying your love. Just to know that I love so many people itself is so great. And you to see, feel that I love so many. But it should be samadrishti, means with the same eyes you should see everyone. You see everybody with the same eyes. दोनों हाथ जोड़ के श्री माता जी के प्रति आभार व्यक्त करते हैं और प्रार्थनाएं अर्पित करते हैं परम पूज्य श्री माता जी आज का सामूहिक ध्यान हम आपके श्री चरणों में समर्पित करते हैं आज के ध्यान में आपने हमें निरानंद प्रदान कर हमें चैतन्य से आशीर्वादित किया इसलिए हम आपके हृदय से ऋणी है संपूर्ण विश्व में विश्व निर्मल धर्म प्रस्थापित करने हेतु कृपा कर हमें सहयोग प्रचार प्रसार का शुद्ध एवं प्रभावी माध्यम बनाइएगा मां हमारी सभी प्रार्थनाओं का स्वीकार कर हमें आशीर्वाद करने की आशीर्वादित करने की कृपा करना मां जय श्री माता जी सामूहिक बंधन लेते हैं
आज का ध्यान केंद्र संपन्न होता है जय श्री माता जी